Hi guys, I'm Boris. I'm very happy that you're here on my YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. Thanks for pressing the subscribe button, uh, ringing the bell and doing all those nice things that all um, YouTubers ask you to do. Uh, by the way, this is my bottle that you can see here in the corner and I'm going to be drinking some water. Throughout this tutorial, uh, I wanted to show you how I create seamless panoramas. Okay, where I have to put this? Seamless panoramas uh, and seamless carousels for Instagram. Uh, it's very easy. I'm going to show you how to create a template in Photoshop, which you can reuse over and over and over again, and you can make everything uh, again. There are five steps, and it's going to take no more than five minutes, 10 minutes tops. So let's dive in uh, and let me show you what I'm going to be slicing to, uh, as a panorama. I created this image from a nine, uh, from nine shots. There they are in Lightroom. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, it was last weekend that I shot this and I stitched it here in Lightroom. And I want to post this on um, Instagram as a carousel. So you can swipe to the uh, to the left, right? Or to the right here, you can see right. So uh, swipe to the left. Um, now, the thing that we have to do is go into uh, Photoshop. There we are and create a new file. You can go here on the left side and press create new, or you can go to file new, or you can just um, hit the command or control N buttons on your uh, keyboard. Um, we have to name this file. I'm going to name it Instagram panel uh, with the underscore there. And now we have to consider the size. You can already see that I have my size with the height. Um, you know that um, Instagram allows you to post square images, one to one ratio, which are 1080 by 1080 pixels um, in dimension. And also it allows you to post over the, couple, the past couple of years, it started allowing us to post uh, portrait images, which are uh, 1080 by 1350 pixels, uh, which is four to five ratio. I'm going to be using the four to five ratio because I'm weird uh, this way and I can actually um, I can actually create a square from the uh, portrait uh, because 1080 is contained in 1350. Uh, this is some kind of weird math that I do in my head. But anyway, I'm going to do a 1080 by 1350 the resolution here is 96 pixels, pixels per inch, but you, you can go with the uh, 72 pixels per inch. I just like uh, slightly more pixels per inch, um, just because. And the color space is going to be the RGB color because this is what we use for web. And the color profile is going to be sRGB IEC 61966-2.1 because this is the color space that everything on the web lives in. Uh, so I'm going to click the Create button and you can already see that I have one portrait image here for Instagram, ready for Instagram. So what I have to do, uh, usually most of the tutorials ask you to do some weird math. Um, consider how many images you're going to be creating, uh, one, two, three, four, five, seven, or 10. Um, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to show you how to create a 10 image spread, and then you can customize it from one to 10, whatever you like. All right. So for that reason, you need to go to layer, uh, sorry, to image, canvas size, or press the command shift, uh, uh, command alt and C. I tend to go with the shortcut keys, command alt C. And there we have the canvas size uh, dialog box. And you can see that I have width uh, 1080 pixels, height 1315 pixels. And the new size here is going to be width 1080. I want 10 images, so I'm going to multiply this by 10. Uh, just press uh, asterisk 10 or shift 8 and then 10. Uh, and I'm going to press the tab key and Photoshop will automatically um, do the calculations, which were not that easy, uh, that hard actually. So I could have just added a zero. Anyway, uh, I'm going to go to the anchor point and I'm going to uh, make sure that my anchor point is to the left of the image. So my image is going to grow from the left to the right, all right? Uh, it's only going to grow from the center. Though if it grows from the center, it doesn't matter. Anyway, 
uh, I'm going to choose my anchor point to be in the middle uh, on the left side. And I'm going to press OK. And I'm going to go and go and press Command 0 so I can, I can see the whole canvas in my, on my screen. And you can see that I have a very wide and very short, not very tall um, canvas, which looks amazing. But I'm not sure where I have to uh, cut my image here. So now I have to create a layout. Um, the create, creation of a layout uh, uses a feature um, that is present in the Adobe uh, 2020 version. And if you're using a later version, there may be some issues in the whole thing, maybe a little bit more involved and it will involve a little bit more map. But anyway, I'm going to show you how you can do this on the latest version of Photoshop. So let's go and create a new guide layout. Okay, so you go to view, new guide layout, and you can see the new guide layout dialog box. Um, you, I'm, I'm just clearing up everything. So you need to do this. Press or check the columns. Uh, you need a gutter and we need 10 columns, right? because we want to export 10 images. And now you can see that you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 columns or 10 slices, 10 separate slices. And of course you have 11 guides. Uh, I'm gonna check the clear existing guides uh, checkbox and press okay. Um, there is something wrong. I probably have a space somewhere, okay. It's everything is all right. Okay, so uh, here we have our template almost ready. Our layout is ready. Now we have to consider a way to export uh, 10 images from this canvas. And the easiest way to, do that, way to do that is using the slice tool, something that I used to use when I was way, way younger. Actually, I was a kid uh, in the 90s. We used to make uh, websites, uh, HTML websites, um, we used to draw everything in Photoshop 5, uh, which is a very old version of Photoshop, and then use the slice tool to slice and dice the whole website, export it, and uh, use a software called FrontPage, which maybe I think now is called Dreamweaver. Um, anyway, I'm going to go to the slice tool. It's the not the first, second, third, fourth, the fifth uh, tool in your um, toolbar. You can press, this is the crop tool. You can press and hold your mouse and there under the crop tool, you can see the slice tool. So I have my slice tool. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit and I'm gonna start creating slices. Uh, for that reason, I'm gonna create two more guides from the top. I'm gonna drag uh, from the ruler to the top and to the bottom of my, um, my canvas. If you don't see the ruler, you just press Command R and then you can press command r to unsee if you want to unsee your ruler so i am going to be using the layout that i created with my guides to do the slices there is one slice and you can uh, see that i have a box and i have one over here this is a user created slice and here i have number two this is a slice that Photoshop created for me automatically. So I have one, two slices, one user created and one default slice. Um, I will keep slicing two and you can see three. Here I messed up, but I don't care. I'm just gonna fix everything for uh, if you take a look, you can see on the upper right hand corner of the slice tool, you see the dimensions. There they are, 1080 by 1350. And I'll keep slicing. Here, when you're ready, you have, nine Here, when you're ready, you have nine slices and you have one default 10 slice. You can stop, but I tend to slice my whole template. So I have 10 separate slices. Now I just want to make sure that they're named correctly. I'm going to go under the slice tool and select the select slice tool, slice select tool, sorry. I'm, double, I'm going to double click on my first slice and see 
It's called Instagram underscore panel underscore zero one. This is the name that I want. Uh, if I go to the second one, you can see it's called Instagram underscore panel underscore number two. This is actually the name that Photoshop will give to my exported files at the end. So we're ready to uh, put in our panel or our graphics and export. Okay, so let's do that. I'll jump into Lightroom. I'll press Command E. Um, Lightroom will probably ask me if I, yeah, if I want to edit the original file. I'll say yes. Now, uh, I did it twice. Now, the file is going to open in Photoshop. I'm going to Command A or select everything, copy, and then paste it in my uh, panel template. You can see that you can. I can see only sky. I'll convert my new layer to a smart object because I like resizing all my images as um, smart objects. And then I'll press the shift key and crop. I will do a five image panel here, but you can easily do 10 or six or two, doesn't matter. I'm just going to make sure that I'm right here on, on my guy because otherwise Photoshop is going to export one little slice here to the right side of my image. Okay, I'm going to press Command-0. I'm going to adjust my image to where I want it to be. Press Enter and now I'm going to show you how easy it is to export only five slices out of this 10 slice uh, panel that I have, 10 slice carousel. I'm going to press, I'm going to actually choose my, uh, pick my crop tool. Here it is, crop. You can see I have a frame around my whole canvas. I'm going to just drag it and there it is. I'm going to be cropping my template. You can see the rest and there it is. You can see the rest of my slices are gone. Um, so uh, here, now I have to save my file. Uh, we're going to use a method of saving, which is called uh, Save for Web. You go to File, Export, Save for Web, and in parentheses it says Legacy. This is the way we used to save files back in the day when I used to do a web design. Uh, so. There is the dialog box for saving for web. You can have different formats here, but I, for, for this tutorial, I'm going to check. I'm going to uh, choose JPEG, maximum size, uh, maximum quality, 100%, progressive. You can go for optimized, whatever. Um, convert to sRGB. This is a moot point because our file is already in sRGB uh, color space. So I'm going to click save. And here it is. I'm going to choose a folder where Photoshop is going to create my slices, export my slices. Um, I'm going to check, make sure that I have checked here. I have from the drop down menu all user slices. Here it is slices, all user slices. Or if you actually haven't created the 10 slice and you have created only nine slices and the 10 is the default slice, uh, you have to choose all slices. So doesn't matter and click save and Photoshop will save your files right here. Oh, it's pretty big right here in a folder called images. This is the default folder images and you're going to have your one, two, three, four, five slices. Okay. So it's pretty easy, pretty uh, straightforward. I think now you have to just, uh, Select all your files and airdrop them to your phone or share them to your phone and in, like share them on Instagram by a great copy. I'm not going to do that now. I'm going to go back to Photoshop because I wanted to show you a couple more things before we um, part. I'm going to press Command Z to undo the cropping. Uh, I'm going to hide this panel because I don't want to see it. And I promise that I'm going to show you how you can export uh, either portrait or square panoramas, uh, images actually that, that um, 
create your panorama. So this is very easy. I need to create one more, um, one more guide so I can crop my images to a square. Uh, there is a couple of ways to do that, but I will be using the um, new guide layout again. Here I have the new guide, the new guide layout. I have the dialog box. I have the same settings, the clear existing guides, doesn't matter. So here I'm gonna have one row. I'm gonna remove the gutter. And I already know that my square images should be 1080 by 1080p. So I'm gonna type 1080. And you can see that I already have this guy right over here, which is exactly 1080 pixels from the top of my canvas. And I'm gonna press OK. And now if I have, if I take my um, my panel, I'm gonna, oops. I'm gonna readjust it a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna move it a little bit higher so I have a little less sky. I'm gonna press the C key or I'm gonna choose the crop tool from my toolbar right over here. And I'm gonna crop to the fifth image and then I'm gonna crop from the bottom to my guide. Press enter and you can see that I have one, two, three, four, five square images. It is very straightforward. Uh, there is nothing that you can uh, mess up here. And you can, again, press Command Alt or Control Alt Shift and S to go to Legacy uh, Save for Web. And you do the same thing. You click Save. And um, I can go under my images right over here. So I can save my files somewhere else. But I'm not going to do that because I don't want square images right now. And guys, this is basically what you need to do to create a very, very um, versatile carousel template. I'm sorry, I spaced out. Uh, <laughs> um, it doesn't happen that much for, to me. So I'm going to press Command Z, Command Z. Uh, I'm going to remove this panorama and I will save this as a new file command shift s and I will save it as an Instagram panel you can see that I already have saved it and the next time I wanted to I want to create a new panorama I will use this template there is a trick to creating a template files in Photoshop especially on a Mac which um, can be a little bit frustrating if you've never done it before so Wait for the next video next week and I'm going to show you how you can do exactly that and you can never be worried that you're going to be saving something over your templates. But this is for the next time. Thanks for being with me. I love you guys. Um, again, subscribe, hit the bell and uh, visit my Instagram profile to see the panorama, how it turned out and uh, go to my blog and do whatever you actually want to do. Um, have a nice day, have a nice evening, have a nice weekend, have a nice week, have a nice year. I'm going to see you on the next one. Bye.